My name is Agnès Calama. I am the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial, Summary or Arbitrary uh, Killings. And I am particularly interested in um, monitoring the, uh, the extent to which the state is respecting the right to life of their citizens. And that means focusing heavily on the use of force by police or other security forces and the use of lethal force. So I came here invited by human rights defenders, NGOs, experts who have been alarmed by the rate of killings by the police of a um, specific target group, it looks like, uh, young men, particularly those living in uh, uh, urban settlement in very poor condition. Uh, as I have uh, explained to them in my work for the last three years, I have uh, found that around the world there is um, a common trend which consists in uh, a war waged by the state against the poor and a war waged by the state against the youth. I have found that in, uh, in the Philippines, I have found it in uh, Nigeria, I have found it in uh, in uh, Venezuela, the war is being waged in the name of the fight against crime, the fight against drugs, or the fight against terrorism. And the victims are often young men, uh, some of whom may indeed engage in criminal activities, many are not. They are just caught in this very big net consisting in um, criminalizing uh, a certain population. It seems to me that uh, the uh, trends and the dynamics in Kenya are unfortunately very much along the lines of what I have just described to you. In the poorest neighborhood of Nairobi and in other places of uh, Kenya, uh, young men have been killed in total impunity by individuals associated with the security forces. In many cases, the uh, investigation into those killings have never taken place or as told. Uh, in many cases that have been reported to me, um, the uh, police itself has interfered with the conduct of an effective investigation, making it almost impossible for the independent monitoring body, which is IPOA, to, uh, to conduct an investigation into uh, the misbehavior of, uh, of security officials. So there are many concerns here. One, of course, is the arbitrary killings, the extrajudicial killings, uh, and, and the, the, the burden, the loss that this is creating for the families, uh, for the community, those young lives that are uh, stopped short of their potential. So that's one big concern. The second, is the fact that investigations are not carried out, or very few of them are carried out, and that there seems to be a policy to prevent investigation uh, on the part of at least certain police officers who will act uh, in the crime scene itself in order to make it difficult for IPOA investigators to proceed with their investigation. So that's a very large concern because um, the effective investigation is an obligation placed upon the government and the failure to investigate constitutes an independent violation of the right to life. And therefore, the third big concern is impunity, is a regime of impunity. Uh, a killing is a terrible loss, is a terrible incident, uh, and it is something that must be reckoned with uh, and people must be held to account. But impunity points to a system. Impunity points to institutions that are failing to work uh, on behalf of the citizens of, of this country. Uh, impunity points to complicity from the bottom to the top of the state apparatus. And this is why impunity must be um, an absolute priority 
for the government of Kenya. I have been, uh, I have felt deeply honored uh, to meet with the human rights defenders working on um, police killings. Uh, I have been in awe with the, uh, the, the mothers uh, of victims who have organized, who themselves have become human rights defenders. Uh, they know that nothing can bring back their children. Some of the women I met have lost two of their sons. Um, but they now fight for justice for others as well. And they want to protect the children of future uh, mothers. Um, so I, it, it is um, the, the richness of the movement, their professionalism, uh, their commitment, uh, their sophistication in uh, understanding documentation, in understanding the importance of data collection, the importance of evidence, the resilience of those people, uh, mothers, youth, human rights defenders, um, the, um, the fact that they organized uh, in those, the fact that they organized in those justice centers uh, based in the community itself and are making their work part of the community. I mean, that's incredibly uh, impressive and it gives me hope uh, because when you have people who are prepared to work so hard uh, to combat their own grief, to make the grief, uh, their grief, um, uh, uh, part of their fight for justice, uh, to organize collectively, to look for accountability, to, um, you know, some of the mothers go uh, to IPOA offices uh, several times a week in order to monitor the progress on the cases. I mean, with that resilience, that commitment, um, that understanding of uh, how impunity functions, I feel hopeful that uh, there are people in Kenya who, who will be able uh, to bring justice and put an end to uh, those uh, absolutely cruel uh, executions uh, by uh, people who should be protecting the community and is are in fact um, killing the community. Fifty-five cases, hundred cases, and we forget that that's when we talk about human life. It's just not cases, it's actually human life. Kenyans you know, the international community, of course, has always a big role to play. They have a role to play in terms of protection. They have a role to play in terms of ensuring that those that are on the front line, the members of, of the community, the human rights defenders, are not harmed for the work they are doing on behalf of international human rights. So, for me, it is incumbent upon the international community, international NGOs, the United Nations, uh, and the embassies themselves to ensure that those individuals that are fighting for, uh, for human rights, for the UN Charter, that they are protected. So they must denounce any attacks against human rights defenders. They must go to a police station when human rights defenders are being arbitrarily detained. They must uh, seek official meetings to raise the issue. They must make it clear that this is an issue of central importance to the international community, as it should be an issue of central importance to, uh, to Kenya, to the political community, to the MPs, to the government, to the legal community. It is only through uh, an international solidarity, uh, through uh, fighting back against the inertia and the complicity that we will be able to um, attack um, the this, uh, regime of impunity that appears to be characterizing um, the killings of uh, young uh, and not so young uh, men in particular in uh, urban settlements. In the course of this academic visit, uh, my friends uh, and uh, the expert who invited me also uh, and members of the community took me to visit uh, the community. And uh, the urban settlement clearly 
is, uh, is a place of extreme poverty. It is a place of extreme neglect. Uh, the killings, therefore, come on top of uh, a cycle of, uh, of violations under international human rights law, access to water, um, uh, access to housing, access to sanitation. Um, you know, all of those combine to creating an environment that is extremely hard. It is a hard environment. It is hard for people who live here. It is hard uh, not to lose uh, side of your own humanity in an environment that every day appears to be attacking you uh, because of the uh, the poverty, the the dirt, the um, the the absence of green, um, the um, the fires that take place because uh, it's so easy for fires to take hold of those uh, of those housing. It is remarkable that this environment does not crush people. Uh, and I'm sure there are some people who are crushed by such an environment, but those that I've met uh, are not. Those that I've met are, have found in their environment the seeds for uh, a bigger story. It's a story about humanity, it's a story about our common humanity, and it's a story for social justice.